So I'm here. Okay. Good morning, sir. You can. Good morning to everyone. I, Dr. Manas Kumar Naik, host of this national webinar organized by Department of Physics, Patamunde College. So we have all our participants, Mr. Susan, our respective principal have already joined the webinar. So now we would like to start our, this conference. First of all, I would like to invite um, Mr. B.C. Dowler, reader in physics, to give a small introduction about our resource person. Please, sir. Thank you, Manas, sir, host of this webinar. Respected participants and dear students, principal Shah. I have the honor and privilege to introduce the distinguished guests of this webinar. First of all, I would like to say something about our principal, Professor Prabhakar Raut Sar. He is a good administrator with loving and humble personality. During his short period, he has prepared this instrument uh, institution successfully to face the NAC peer team digits and do a lot for this institution. He is very much cooperative and supportive, and he <laughs> has engaged himself for this betterment of the institution. I <coughs> Uh, I extend my gratitude to him to join this webinar. <laughs> Next, I would like to introduce our HOD, the convener of this webinar, Dr. Ramesh Kumar Sahu, HOD of the Physics Department. He is a man of action without any procrastination. He is a hardworking and committed teacher. You never see him, any laziness with him. And for this institution, he has also engaged himself to do a lot. Thank you, sir, for this webinar. Next, I would like to say about our respected resource person, Dr. Mrutunjai Bhuya, a young scientist, assistant professor, head of the department of center for theoretical and computational physics. He is not only the pride of our Department, he is the pride of the Potamundi College, he is the alumni of this Potamundi College. And this topic, as it today, the topic is the Newton matter, which is a very new topic. We are also interested to learn from him, but we also want to know his journey. We are eager also to know about his journey from Potamundi College to uh, 
Malay University. That is located at Malay University, Malaysia. And uh, that journey, that is Malaysia Kuala, Kuala Lumpur. And I, I hope it will be very much inspiring, inspiring for our students. Thank you, sir, to give your consent <laughs> and give your time, valuable time for our institution to <coughs> joining as resource person. Next, I extend my, sorry, I introduce the IQC, IQC coordinator, Dr. Sunil sir, reader in chemistry. Next, IQC member, Manas sir, Subhas is <coughs> Dr. Manas sir, lecture in English. Next, Subhas is sir, IQC member, and I extend my thankfulness to all the respected participants. I hope, dear students, you should learn patiently from the resource portion, which is not only a successful portion, he is also the product of this institution. I must expect your discipline. Then I say only one word about our students. We must listen and learn and grow. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir, for a short introduction. Uh, now, I would like to invite our uh, respected principal, sir, Professor Prabhakar Rao, sir, um, to give a welcome address. Good morning, all. It's a proud privilege on my part to be associated with this webinar organized by the Department of Physics. First of all, I would like to welcome Professor Mrutimja Bhuya, who happens to be an old student of this institution and also who belongs to our locality. So welcome Mr. Bhuya for attending this webinar. Now I welcome Dr. Ramesh Kumar Sau, Head of the Department of Physics, Professor Vaikuntha Raoul, Department of Physics, the IQSC coordinator, Dr. S.K. Prasad, and his team members, the host of the meeting, the webinar, Manas Kumar Naik, and dear students, and others who are associated with this program. So today's program, which is organized by the department, it focuses on neutron stars. The matter may sound new for the arts department students like me, but whatever I have learned about it, it is very important from the physics department point of view. As I know, neutron stars, when a star explodes, it creates or it gives birth to the neutron star, which is a very rare object. And today's program will focus on the study of these neutron stars. The Department of Physics is organizing this, keeping in view of the interest of the students. Officially, as the head of the institution, I declare this webinar open and welcome all the persons who have spared their valuable time to make this program successful. And personally, I welcome Professor Mutunjay Puya for being with us for this program. 
Thanks, everybody. Thank you again. Panasabu. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your beautiful welcome note. Uh, now, I would like to invite Dr. R.K. Sahu, sir, head of the Department of Physics, to introduce the topic to our participants. Sir, please. Thank you, everyone. Just, just a minute. Uh, there is a technical problem. I would like to solve this problem. Then uh, we'll start the webinar. Uh, I would like to take only five minutes. Online, did you? That day, yeah. Sorry, everyone, for the technical inconvenience. I deeply regret for everything. Now, I request Dr. Ramesh Kumar Sahu, sir, to introduce the topic to our participants. Good morning to all esteemed principal Professor Prabhaka Rao of Patamde College and resource person Mrutyanjaya Bhuya Associate Professor respected teachers joined in this webinar and uh, respected IPSC members and uh, my colleague B.C. Rao and uh, teachers joined in the seminar from outside college and my dear students. It is a pleasure to give a brief introduction about the seminar organized by Department of Physics, that is Neutron Star Matter from Heavens to Earth, which is a very interesting subject in the present scenario. Most of the People in the world working in astrophysics exclusively neutron matter, neutron star. As we know that star is formed due to nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion, due to nuclear fusion, star is formed. Neutron star is a exclusively star 
which contains neutron neutron is formed by the capture of electron with proton when proton when electron is captured by proton neutron is formed a neutron star is composed of neutrons star is a given object in which fusion reaction generates heat which emits radiation and due to heavy mass the gravitational pulls inward and uh, radiation pulls outward which is balanced new star exists when the fuel is total fuel is burned gravitational pulls gravitational force pulls the material and the matter becomes collapse neutron star it is dead star and which is very heavier than the mass of heavier denser than the sun near about 3 to 4 as we know and we know the detail of the subject from our resource person who was uh, the student of this of our department and uh, who passed out to, uh, at uh, 206 then after uh, he joined uh, sambalpur university after completion he completed his phd from institute of physics and uh, he is very thorough about uh, this topic then so now i we wait for deliberating speech from professor mutunja bhuya thank to all and i give my speech thank you sir thank you for your short note about the topic i think our participant might have got small information about the concern topic on which our research person is going to deliver that uh, his lecture now i would like to invite professor murtinjan bhuya sir for his deliverance sir please okay uh, is audible to everyone yes sir you are audible okay respected principal patamde college and uh, oh, my beloved teacher Uh, Ramesh sir, and also from the mathematics department, Arvind sir also there. So it's a very uh, honor. Today, well, today also pleasure for me to present a topics in front of uh, my uh, means I I was study there basically. So here I thank the host to organizing such kind of uh, activities means basically scientific activities in the department which is actually inaugurate. Uh, uh, in our time, when I was uh, doing my undergraduate in Potamde College, at the time I do not have such kind of uh, activities to explore ourselves. But nowadays, uh, this kind of activity organizing by the um, college, it's really pleasure as well as also make me proud for this kind of activities. So thank you everyone for the um, introduction to me here, and also I thanks again. Uh, Ramesh sir and also from the mathematics department Arvind sir they all know me because I was there and other teachers those who are there uh, I think say I have uh, not much uh, uh, no those who are present uh, uh, presently there in the de department as well as well as in the Patamde College so okay so I have to going to start my uh, seminar now that is uh, I have to going to share my screen so. so everyone can see my screen my screen is visible to everyone uh, yes yes sir okay that's all right
so okay so now i have to start the um, topics that i have to discuss so okay this is a little thing so if you see here so i have started the topics like a, so here is my title of the talk it's like isospin asymmetry in nuclear matter from earth to heaven or this is like the same topics that had to, what i have to uh, give you this like newton star so because uh, why i have to choose this kind of topics basically what i have presented in the, in the title and here the i make little change to the title because i i try to cover the students those who are in the department basically try to understand that what is the topics i am going to talk so here the first things that i have talking about the isospin okay so what is this isospin actually stands for so that is the first things we have to check out that is what is this isospin so if we, uh, uh, this is because i think all of the, them know that there is a quantity called spin if we are going to the third component of the spin then it is going to isospin and there is another thing to say asymmetry so it is a very english word normally if you are look at this asymmetry means there is not uh, identical or not same okay so when you are going to a nucleus basically if you are going to a nuclear systems so my topic is earth to heaven so here if you see uh, we are in the earth and i consider that nuclear matter or infinite nuclear matter or neutron star these are talking like we, are, we did not see but we are examining and observing and also doing experiment as well as also predicting theory to understand what is this so that's why i call that as heaven because heaven is a positive sense that we have to understand okay this is heaven and we are in the earth so we try to understand in the same of uh, because when you are taking that neutron star it does not mean that it is contain only neutron there is a fraction of proton as well so similar to the uh, nucleus so the that fraction if you are going to connect actually in the earth what we see because there is a nucleus made up of all these things we know that this is the fundamental particle basically we are to going to talk in the beginning that made to the all kind of things what we are using in our daily life so for this kind so my topic is like earth we have to consider to the nucleus and going to the heaven that is the bridge which is called nuclear nuclear physics or nucleus is the bridge that we you have to connect that means basically in specific i can understand that is the particle the constituent of the uh, nucleus that is proton and neutron in together we can call them nucleon i think so all physics students know this so nucleon is the bridge which will be going to connect the earth that means the earth means the nucleus in the earth and the neutron star so neutron star is also similar to like a big nucleus okay so i here what would to thanks because uh, uh, patamunde college who inviting me and uh, this is the university mala this is my affiliation so where i am working and also there, there is another joint affiliation i have that is dotan university from vietnam uh, so i thanks also the iqac to organizing such kind of events in the in a college to motivate and explore the knowledge of uh, um, uh, students those who are present uh, in the patamunde college okay okay i can put here so okay so my outline of the talk is like that concept so basically we have to try to see that uh, what is nucleus and how we have to connect second thing is the ldm which is nothing but i think all the physics students from the department they must know that what is liquid drop model so it is a very beginning when 1935 or 1938 because i do not remember exact the year but it is like that 1935 this model was going to start to explain the nuclear nucleus so basically we have to try to understand the what is the binding force 
that is the binding energy we try to calculate from the liquid drop model. It is not actually limited to the liquid drop model in the calculating the binding energy. So what are the things there we also are going to discuss. And we have to go for the formation and evolution. Experimental constant, what we have, that means the observational constant from, for the nuclear matter or neutron star. And the, what is the experimental data for the finite nuclei? Because here I want to distinguish two things. One is a finite nucleus, another one is a nucle infinite nuclear matter or neutron star. So for the students, those who are there, because I try to correlate because the topics not going bend of their understanding. So I try to correlate all the things in a better way. So first I have to tell you the finite nucleus. Finite means I can count, but is the number, right? Infinite means I cannot count. So finite nucleus is a system where I can count the number of proton and number of neutron is available in the, uh, inside the nucleus or inside a system. But when I'm going to the infinite nuclear matter, it means there is infinite. I cannot count, but how many numbers of proton and neutrons are there? Then how I have to deal? But every system has a particular volume. So from the volume, I can calculate the density of the system. So density is the density is the parameter which can determine which can play the roles to determine the infinite nuclear matter. But in the finite nucleus, we are in the function of R. That means with the coordinate system. That means R is a coordinate system and density which is connected with the Fermi momentum. So nuclear matter in the momentum space and we are in the coordinate space. So connecting the both the things is little typical. Okay but it is also tricky to do. So, okay, the second. So, okay, so there is uh, one more thing uh, here. Another thing is EOS, that is equation state, equation of state, okay? Equation of state of neutron star. So we have to go because actually equation of state is nothing but it is a trajectory or a plot. In a simple language, we can tell that it is a pl plot between the energy density and the pressure density of. So remember, in, the, in the, uh, all the time, your terminology is very important because I'm talking here equation of state is a function of energy density and pressure density. That means the, I, have the, I have to plot the energy density in the x, uh, energy density in the x axis. And uh, if I plot the pressure density in the y axis, then I, what is the graph will really represent that one is the equation of state we're going to discuss. Why I'm calling here density? Because I already told you, we do not know as a function, what is the number there? So we always talk about the density, the term of density. But when you are going to finite system, immediately it is a energy, binding energy, like that. Energy of the system is binding energy of the system. So that is the things. Pressure of the nucleus means it is the L coefficient of the nucleus. Immediately I can tell you, okay. Next one is the prediction and correlation. So we have to try to correlate. Either we are really reaching from the earth to heaven or not. That's the story. Okay, here you can see there is a, some pictures I'm giving you. So here this is some experimental things that what is discussing. And here is a flow chart that is so that how the uh, new, new stars burn and other things which you can find from the Euclid and other thing, all the things in the internet very well. But when you are going to, this is a, a composition of the neutron star I'm discussing here. Here is the surface, one surface is there. There is, there is another internal core and there is another core and which is another inside more depressed core is unknown. That is a question mark still now. So we cannot have idea to explain this thing. Okay, let's go slowly, okay? Now I'm starting from very beginning. All you know from the eighth class. This periodic table, first time introduced in our uh, science books in eighth class. Okay, but not that colorful, but it is like that. Black and white, but it so look like this. So when you are looking at this, here I have uh, noted that is periodic table, one is a nuclear chart. So actually what are these difference between a periodic table and a nuclear chart? That, are, that is the first thing we must have to know. Okay, so if we are going to a periodic table, the last element you can see it is 118 Ognacium. Uh, basically, this, uh, this one, the last element which is found out in the JINR. It is here, it, no name is there. On account, um, it is written. But this is like the last element is found out which is already named that is Ognacium and which is uh, uh, synthesized in JINR, Joint Institute of Nuclear Research, Russia basically the laboratory in the Dubna. 
okay where hot fusion facilities are there so that is the hot fusion facility where we have synthesized that last elements so when i am studying in the bsc level at that time my element is restricted at 106 here last element is 106 so i do not know about other elements but then it was extended to 1112 now it is 118 so if you going to count to all the elements in the periodic table it is only 118 so then your questions come because when we are talking about the periodic table that means we are going to talking about in atom that means in the atomic scale where the electron is a particle which is play the electron is a particle which play also great role because when uh, i think the chemistry people are there also chemistry students are also there they can understand that the composition for example when we are going to talking about h2o so hydrogen is there oxygen is there the two symbol going to explain these things because they have the electrovalent bond or a covalent bond all these kind of bonds they going to form between the two element and we call them it is a compound but when the same things we are going to talking about a nucleus there is no presence of proton there so there is a proton and a neutron so pro neutron and proton together called as nucleon and inside the nucleus the together inside a system it is called as nucleus so there is no concept of electron there so there is in the bsc level there is a question sometimes some questions come why electron cannot be exist inside a nucleus so that also we have to if you going to uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics there is a relation you can find out del e del t which is all means uh, which is equal to your because it is less than equal to these these things they write because it is uncertain so that's why but here i am telling it is equal to h cut here so then h cut by 2 or 2 uh, forget about this constant h cut is like this just to follow that so from that you can find a relation which is mass is inversely proportional to the r so that means r is proportional inversely proportional to m or m is inversely proportional to r so if you put the mass of the electron here then you can find the range of the interaction which will become around 10 to the power minus 11 meter so which is uh, less than a fermi means a nucleus has the radius always 10 to the power minus 14 so you get a radius here for the electron is 10 to the power minus 11 so which cannot be stay inside the nucleus always outside of the nucleus so that is a very quantum mechanics that's why always they try to learn so how to you have to correlate all the physics in our application not only to read okay this is uncertainty principle that is this no we have to understand what to, what we are actually reading that the things we have to get it here so this thing so here is the concept of atomic physics when we are going to same things in the nuclear charge this one is a examples of nuclear charge here is around 11000 nuclei are there so then you ask that we have 118 to just before in the previous slide you mentioned that there is 118 elements now you are taking that 11000 nuclei are there yes 11000s of nuclear there those are isotope isoton and isobar so that's why this is the border line i have to give a very simple brief introduction of this this is a border line which goes the drip line we call the nuclear chart it is the drip line neutron side is called neutron drip line and the proton side because your proton in the x axis so proton side is called as your proton drip line so if you see this beta stable this is the line which is called as beta stable line the black dots there so all the periodic the elements from the periodic table always situated among this black dots that means they are the stable which one is the most stable nuclei from the nuclear chart these are tabulated in your periodic table okay that thing you have to remember so here what about the elements we get from here and what are the nuclei here these are these are called beta stable from the english word you can understand everything physics because uh, abnormally or atomally no one introduce any word beta stable means these nuclei are stable against beta decay so in the book maybe you do not get this kind of a uh, uh, definition but you can get like they are stable these thing they writing like this way because if you are understanding is good then you can understand beta stable that means beta is the symbol so which is come for your beta decay 
and they are stable. That's why they call that weak stable nuclei. This is the lines, the black line. And this, uh, this lower part of the black line is known as neutron side and upper side. So if you see here from the beginning, because I want to connect these things, okay? So if you see here in the lower part of the nuclear chart, so there is like, you know, the proton number and neutron number is almost like equal. So that's why the, there is a the, the curve, which is the slope is generating here with the proton and neutron number, it's like 45 degree making angle to that. After that, this if I follow this pattern, this must be go by this blue line, but exactly not happen. It is bending towards the neutron side. So that means when you are going to heavier elements, my stable element also coming with more number of neutron as compared to proton. It can be explained through also neutron, neutron bearing and other things. But we have to discuss a little bit in this uh, seminar. So these things should be going to happen. And that that is the distinction between a two proton, proton and a neutron in inside a nucleus, we do by the isospin, the third component of the spin determine which is proton, which is neutron. And the as, uh, asymmetry term, what I discussed, that is the number of proton and number of neutron. The difference between the number of proton to number of neutron is known as your asymmetry. And as they are isospin, means isospin dependent particles, so we call that isospin asymmetry. Or a finite nucleus. Finite nucleus means this kind of nucleus you can see. When you are here, oxygen 30, calcium 30, that means 20 proton, 20 neutron. So when you are going to pin 132, which is stable one, the magic nuclei, you know that it is 50 with 82, 50 proton and 82. If you are going to here, it is 82 proton, 126 neutron. So you can subtract 208 by 82. So these kind of things, so, and this is the last magic nuclei, what we have, uh, we have naturally occur and also we know very well of that. So here you can see the proton number and neutron number get a very big difference, 126 and 82. So that's why we take the frame PB208 as the nucleus which is it look like, and we compare this nucleus with the neutron star. That means in the neutron star also, there is a fraction of proton and also most of the neutrons are there. So this asymmetry, which is for a small nucleus is like how many numbers here? 126 minus 82. It will like 40 differences there around. So this difference is going to be bigger, bigger and bigger when it became a size of like Newton star. So that things we have to correlate, okay? So few amazing facts about uh, Newton star. First we have to know it is a very dense object. So how, how dense it is? The density of this system is look like 10 to the power 15 gram per centimeter cube. So if we take a centimeter cube, this is the weight of that Newton star. That means if you take four teaspoon of earth, okay, four teaspoon, the weight will be weight of the moon. So that means if we take four teaspoons of uh, um, the material made off of the Newton star, so then it will become the weight of a moon. So then, then you can understand. That means if I pinch off, that means if I take a pinch of materials from the, whatever the composition of the Newton star, later we'll discuss. If you take from the surface or a center of the Newton star, then it will come to a weight of a trough. That means it is totally highly dense. And in the density of iron, I can tell it is like five to six times of the density of iron. That means the uh, composition of the Newton star near to the surface and the central region is highly, highly and very highly dense. Okay. Okay. Now we have to go to the gravity. So it is almost like 10 to the power 14 times. That means 100 billion times of the earth gravity. So then you think that if Newton star have that much gravity and you think about the black hole. People talking about black hole, where all the things is going to attract all these things. Eh? So you can think of this guy. But then the speed of the things, speed is like, uh, because if you, speed depends upon the size of the uh, system. So basically, if you are going to see what is observed speed for the Newton star, it's 716 hertz. So the Kaplan frequency, that is in the frequency, we uh, uh, express the speed in terms of frequency here, okay? So Keplerian frequency is around 1400 uh, hertz. So like that. So you can see 
Uh, if he we take like if the radius of the neutron star is 15 kilometer, but most mostly it is around 10 kilometer. Even we take like five kilometer extra, so that is 15 kilometer. Then it is fourth, fourth, one fourth of the speed of light. That means that much heavier speed in the equator that uh, uh, Newton star rotated, um, rotated with axis. Okay, so that is equatorial uh, speed. Velocity that is called okay. So then you have to go into the magnetic field. Magnetic field is very high because uh, you can see the gravity is that the magnetic field is a trillion of the earth magnetic. So this comparison that I do here just to know you that it is what kind of system, what a giant means all these kind of dense and highly temperate systems we have the neutron star. So to handle this in nuclear model, which is just just studying the nucleus to the Newton star. Okay, let's go for that. So here also temperature you can see, here is a 10 billion. And if you are going to the last latest discovery of a high temperature super, uh, super um, conductor, uh, if you are going to, this is the element, Mercury, T, I, B, K, C, K, C, U, O, 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 25. This is a very big name, so I not right. Temperature is like 138 and that one is here, the temperature is like 10 billion Kelvin. So you can compare how it's not, and it is also high temperature superconductor. So that's why. Now your questions come, why we need all these things to, because another thing, so more important things I have noted here, that one is neutron. This is the only place where neutrino going to capture. I think all the physics students maybe know that when a neutron going to proton, a beta decay, beta minus, and a proton going to neutron, there is a beta plus, all this decay, there is a, a, a emission of neutrino and antineutrino. Okay, electron neutrino, muon neutron, time neutron, many neutrons there, but electron neutrino basically you read in your obvious level also, beta decay. So that neutrino also, because it's a massless and also very light or non-interacting particle, also trap in the uh, trap in the uh, neutron star. So that is another one of the uh, very, uh, very important things that which make us to emphasize, to study the neutron star, basically. Because what the things we have to, now whatever the signals, what you are using in your mobile and everything, that signal is calling, coming from the electromagnetic radiation transformers, right? So when we, we are talking about, the, if you get the information to the matter wave, then the era will be going to change. And in 2018, that was going to happen because the first time we observed the two binary neutron star uh, merger, that is called GW1708817, that in the nine, 19, two, 2017, the first time observed binary neutron star and merger event, where we can get the very big information regarding the matter. Once we know, perfectly understand the matter wave, then we have to do the communication through matter of which is hypersonic speed than as compared to this kind of a transmission. And also it will never affect through the electromagnet because it's a charge now. So due to the charge, it is uh, some, some uh, rain happens, some cloud happens, then it is blocked. Sometimes your signal not come. This could not to be happen. All these things is more uh, dense to the uh, topics that is very hard for you to in the beginning. Uh, okay, we proceed slowly. So now we have to understand then how actually the neutron star going to form basically. So this is a very simple uh, take, um, assumptions that but there is a million many way that neutron scan star can be formed. But here is also uh, given a very simple things that is. So if the core of, of a massive star, massive star and neutron star is different. Massive star since for example, it mass is like a, 10 to the power, uh, uh, for example, 20 times or five times or 50 times of the mass of the uh, mass of the star. Basically, we measure the mass of mass of a neutron star or a compact star. The unit called uh, this symbol is stand for O dot, which stand for mass of the sun. That means what is the mass of the sun? We divided uh, Newton star mass divided by mass of the sun. Then we know that means mass of a Newton star two means it is two times the mass of the uh, mass of the sun. So Newton star basically, if you are going to see the what is the volume or surface area of the Newton star, it is less than the Kendrapada total district. 
for the what is, what is the weight of the star weight of the star is the two time of the sun so that then you can imagine how dense and how strong what is the composition of the matter can be so that's why it is one of the source that can where we can get the more information about the matter weight okay so here is the massive star undergo gravitational collapse and then what happen then proton and electron literally form then what is the things then you are telling you are neutron star but now the proton electron form but proton electron which is such kind of high temperature high density there is many beta decay quick very 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 quickly happen and that's going to proton converted to a neutron through electron capture as well as beta plus and beta plus electron capture i think both are same similar process almost same process but the only the probability of electron capture is very rare as compared to the beta beta plus beta plus beta plus also normally happen in the nucleus but electron capture is very hard to happen in the nucleus on the earth so that's the story so due to the high pressure here electron capture very fastly happen which is proton and electron capture process happen which is converted to the neutron and neutron is going to excess and then this process is running inside the neutron star that is the comes of the neutron star we know about the neutron star it is a collapse mode proton and electron combine to form neutron and hence the name neutron star so here does not mean that it is contain only neutron but here the system contain neutron proton electron muon and many things so now the system become bit, bit, bit complex right in the finite nucleus why i am talking about a nucleus there is a proton and neutron now i am talking neutron proton electron muon all these things but not it is like a atom because it when the reacts are happen this kind of a particle this is a leptons i know i know you know that in the particle classification those who are um, half spin we called as fermion they have to follow the pauli exclusion principle those who are the spin integer spin then we called as boson they form the follow the boson and boson einstein condition all these things we know in the bs level so you can answer which electron is one of the leptons and muon all the other this so then there is a simple question is there in dangerous of course this are uh, not true but if it is come uh, near to the uh, earth then it is dangerous because it's very heavy as well as also very high magnetic field maybe it can uh, disturb the planetary orbit of the earth as well so okay but this can things is uh, very out of imagination of okay so now as i told you neutron proton electron muon all these are leptons and half spin particle okay so means half spin particle means uh, multiply by the uh, uh, spin half that means integer not in, in one is integer that means multiply by the integer 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that half spin means it is multiply by half that is n by 2 1 by 2 3 by 2 5 by 2 7 by 2 like that okay so and which is even number then give you to the integer to which is odd number that give you the half there so that is half spin particle as they are half spin particle you just follow your quantum mechanics so they are they can be explained by the anti symmetric wave function remember your quantum mechanics if they have uh, pauli exclusion principle and also quantum mechanics if they are half spin particle that means the fermions we also call them as fermion neutron proton called as fermions so that is anti symmetric wave function the uh, the wave function which can explain the nucleon is anti symmetric So these are the chemical compositions we have to need to balance also when we are going to work on or trying to learn what is the neutron star under. Here are more things you have to know that is about the neutron star composition and other. Okay, and charge, isospin, strangeness, all things to have to maintain in the we have to maintain in the neutron star. Now these are the two examples that I have given here. So you can see proton, electron. Uh, here is it, that is the electron electron capture process and here also neutron converted to proton this process also slowly happen they are also continuously that's why there is proton again these systems is continuously it's a chain process type which is running there inside the neutron and there is a balance between the all strand particles and here is a uh, very schematic diagram of the neutron star you can see it is the four large core very difficult to understand so we call that neutron proton electron muon but here also we going to discuss more things about that and here is also core of the outer core which is all, also 
two times or three times of the density of the nucleus. Inside core is five to ten times of the density of the uh, density of the nucleus. Now we try to understand in the atomic uh, means your uh, atomic nucleus and the neutron star in a level. So here the mass number, the maximum heavier element, it is here I have mentioned like 235. But still now we have like T to four mass is the length uh, we have. Okay, it is 120 theoretically. But if you are going to experiment, it is the maximum mass of a nucleus which is already synthesized in the laboratory. Okay. So now we have to go to the radius of a uh, uh, nucleus, which is around 2 to 10 Fermi. If it is small uh, radius, then it will be 2 Fermi to start like deuteron or something. I, I think you know all these things, deuteron problem in your class, you know, plus 3. Uh, so, and here the 10 Fermi, if you are going to heavier element, because if you put the formula here and just uh, do the calculation by Excel sheet or something, you can easily get, because R0 has a value like 1.6 and multiply with the mass number. So easily you can find that a radius of a nucleus is around 2 to 10 per. And the density of a nucleus, if you divide that mass number, the mass A by 4 pi 3 pi r cube, if you know the radius of the nucleus from this formula, then you know the mass number, then you have to divide this, then you can find the density of a nucleus is around 10, 0 0.15 0 per, me, per me minus 3. I am telling in the for me minus for you, I am writing actually in the gram centimeter. But this unit I am not, I actually not use. Basically, we use in the scale of Fermi. For you, I am writing this. Here also, I writing for me, you can see. So that is for me here, you can convert into per minus 14. You can multiply that's all. So here is a gram in centimeter cube. I also give you the density for your understanding. So basically, in the for me minus three, uh, this is the saturation density of a nucleus. But in the same cases, I think this curve you know very well, and is the fusion process, fission process, exothermic, endothermic. I think you all know these things. I don't want to discuss much. So here, if you're going to the same things, here the mass is around. This is the mass we read here is around 238. Okay. So here the mass is going to mass of the two times of the mass of the sun. Now can now you can understand. What is the mass of the system? Now your radius is around 10 kilometers. I told you 10 kilometers, maybe it's like less than the district uh, Kendrapada and Patamada within that finish. This much only radius. But what is the mass? Two times of the sun. And the central density is four to 10 times of the saturation density. Four times of the iron density of iron or two times like that. So compactness is like two. For this kind of measurement our, of that baryon, this is the baryon number or baryon density, you can say binding energy is too high, which is very less in temperature, you can see it's like 1-2% of the uh, system, there is 10% of the system like that. So you can put in the mass in the gram and other, it is like so big number. So how you have to deal these things in a nuclear model? But the two things you can find here common, there is a mass, Number is here, also we have a mass here. There is, uh, there is a radius also here, we have a radius also here. So density also there, density also here. Particle also neutron, proton, electron, muon, all these things, we have also proton, neutron, all these things. I have to connect it. So these are some of the very history of new, uh, neutron star. Basically, I have given the first neutron discovery. That's why then started with the neutron star. Uh, the prediction like 1931, neutron stars not to be a neutron star. There are some contradictory sentence. Then uh, uh, there is a discovery of a neutron. Then immediately see, man is very curious because all the time when you are going, going to bath also, our grandma and grandfather are always going to show the sky, the same things. So man is always very curious to know about the planetary system. Even 32 and 34, they're talking about neutron stars. This is uh, very, and the end product of a supernova, like it is almost very close to the prediction now. So now there is a Newton star uh, limit. What is the Newton star can uh, mass of the, how can, and there is this limit, which is called Chandrasekhar limit. We have to also go for that. And these are the few things that we have to 
know that how the neutron star come to play supernova magnetic star all these stuff these are the discoveries of a neutron star in every uh, few years from last uh, almost like 60 100 since 100 years we have this kind of discoveries are running so now i can i have to tell you the last two neutron star where the mass and uh, radius was find out it is 2010 and 13 and 13 and 2017 have binary neutron star mergers events which i do not want to discuss it's complex purpose okay. so after we know basic things and also know already observe the things that there is a neutron star exist and all these things then we must have to study and you can see this is the measurement in a different different year but i have mentioned here all these things we are plotted in a graph so you can see most of the star which is the lying like 1.5 solar mass previously previous whatever the star which is come out it is around 1.5 solar mass 0 0.5 0 0.1 and 1.5 but in 2013 that's 2010 and 2013 two sol neutron star observed which mass is around two times of the solar mass this make change in the all the, because theory is something like that because we going to calculate something so we first know the data these are the observation data then we make a theory that can explain to this data right because my points are now within here so i put to trying to put a theory which can explain this but once there is something come which is banned of the theory that is the discovery here then there is a difference is not also like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. It is 0 0.5 of the difference in the mass. So it is very stringent constant on the nuclear, nuclear equation of state. Because when we are going to for any theory, we have like it. Because this mass is determined from the energy density and pressure density. The same like your binding energy. Okay. So this then it will make a very big constraint to the model that which going to explain this neutron star is possible, how we can explain in our model, because model has some limitation, we cannot go beyond of that. And theory has no only, for example, some theory do not have any limitation, or equation do not have, because they are universal. But the model is something like that, we make, we implement the theory in it or a particular system that's called as model. So that means that model is fitting to, like we are telling this uh, city is the model of that city. That means it is this model. We design ourselves. We design that theory which can explain to that uh, uh, scenario. But when the scenario is going to change, then model is felt to explain. Okay, that I can explain you here very, um, very serious, very proper way. Now here you can say, because I do not have much time that I can go to show you that how the relation come out. But here you can see there is a RN and RP. RN is stands for the neutron radius and the P, uh, RP stands for the proton radius. For example, if a system is a nucleus, it look like this. And there is a proton and neutrons are distributed. As neutron and proton numbers are not equal, so that's why the radius for the proton and radius for the, in the book, you have only one formula, this R0, A2, R1 by 3. But if you replace by N and replace by Z also, you can get some radius, okay? It's a simple thing telling, but it is not actually actual because this calculation is different, okay? But I do not want to go for the calculation. I want that you understand what is the things there, okay? So here is RN and RP. That is the difference between the RN and RP. We call as, this is called skin thickness, okay? Newton star skin thickness. We call that, this is called skin thickness. And we calculate, I told you, we try to connect because it is already very, very well established stable nuclei. That is, that one is the last magic, double magic. Double magic, you know, uh, the magic numbers, uh, I think you all know, this is Z is equal to 82 and N is equal to 126. This so this is double magic. Two magic numbers are there. In the cell model, you know, these magic numbers, how the cell gaps come, all these things. So this is a, a double magic nuclei and I calculate this Rn and uh, Rn minus Rp and try to correlate with the equation of state. Equation of state is a function of uh, energy density to pressure density, P as a function of rho and energy density as a function of rho. Then we can find this kind of graph basically. Okay, I will show you this kind of graph. So if you are trying to 
correlate this graph for a particular system like RN and RP with the equation of state, then I can find few models predict in this region and few models predict in this region. So now concept comes. So if this is here, this one is true or this one is true. Now this is a very big experiment running in the Jefferson lab. Okay, three times they have the results, but they get the result which has a very big error mark because as neutron is a neutral particle, it's very hard to get the radius for the neutron. So that's why they're doing the experiment. But in 2020, 20, 20, 2021, end of the 2021, Strix 2, if you search now in the Google, you can find Strix 2 last update in 2021. They get very better accuracy measurement in the neutron. For example, here they get, before they're getting like this, if your error bar is like that, that means it will cover all the models those who are here, like this. They're getting this point, but with a big error bar. Now the precise measure these things. So before this kind of model has very accuracy to reproduce the neutron star mass because the mass of the neutron star uh, around 1.5. And this kind of model we call as softer model. And this kind of model, those who are here, we call that steeper model. And this model unable to produce the Newton star mass like 1.5 because it is giving always more mass like 2.0. But when this new discovery comes, scenario going to change. That means an all non-relativistic model. These are called non-relativistic. This is relativistic. We'll go for that. I'll talk. So here, this model now going to play a great role. Okay, this is little understanding just to, okay? You have to come to your, where you understand, we have to play with that only. So these things you know all, right? So one, this is your uh, liquid drop model in your book already, in the BLC. Here is AB, it's a volume term, because as a liquid drop, you consider nucleus is a liquid drop. Of course, there is a volume, so this volume term comes. As the liquid drop has a surface because it's a balance between the surface strength and if you are going to classically mechanics, classically classical mechanics to explain the liquid drop. But actually here we are taking nucleus as a liquid drop, not liquid drop exactly. Nucleus as a liquid drop. So then they have a volume. Of course, the volume term comes. Volume term is connected with the, uh, 4 by 3 pi r cube. So if you put the value of r, then you can get a, a to the power 1 by 3 to the power q. So give you a. Surface term gives you 2 to the power 3. And then there is a Coulomb term because as my liquid drop contains proton and neutron, proton is a charge particle. Automatically, the Coulomb term comes Z1, Z2 by R. R is nothing but which is R0, A to the power 1 by 3, which is here. Okay. So I try to express all my things in term of A. Now your term is coming N minus Z by A. So n is the neutron number, is the proton number. If there is a number of proton and number of neutron are different, that difference gives you the asymmetry. This is the most important term, not in the finite nucleus, but very important in the new, neutron star matter or neutron star or compact star. Because where the number of neutron go very high as compared to the z. And here there is one more tricky thing I will achieve. n minus z is asymmetry. Then why the square is here? What is the need? Because I ask you, what is the difference between 5 and 8? So you tell that 5 minus uh, 8 minus 5 is equal to 3. Then what is the need of a square here? But it is used in the equation, you know, it's a formula. So here, if you, n, z, for example, if z is more than n, then the, uh, this gives you a negative number and it becomes plus, which is how means to change the minimization of the binding energy. That's why n minus z square. That means if it is also called minus, so minus or square gives you plus. And also if it is called to plus, also plus or square also gives you plus. So that means there is no change in your formula which is written here. Okay, now, okay, these are the very basic things you must have to know. And this fitting constants, which is come from the by fitting to the uh, experimental data and other. So this like this way, then we know about liquid drop. And this term will come to play a great role in uh, great role in your this asymmetric term going to play a great role in your uh, Newton star. Newton star have this surface and also this and this. The Coulomb terms also there, but it's very minimal. But when you are going for the infinite nuclear matter, they have only two terms, uh, two terms, there is no surface. Okay, this is a complex story, not go for that. Okay, Newton star we have to come. 
So now there are many models which are available uh, in, uh, in the uh, for the study of nuclear physics. First one is AB ISO model, model where is first principle, very complex. And this is not applicable to, uh, still now we have not applicable to even for the oxygen 16, because this unable to calculate the binding in the energy of oxygen 16. Why? The simple things is that if you remember your, your uh, uh, Schrodinger equation, it's square square by 2m r square plus b like this, and psi, there is another e plus psi like this, or e psi you can write it, okay? The symbol is fine always because Greek symbol or our symbol is also perfect, no matter. So here, if you see, this is a kinetic term. It depends only on the mass. There is no meaning. It is always, uh, you cannot change anything in this. But that is the important term is the V, which is the potential. When you are like, for example, there is a room, only one or two, two particles there. The interaction between two to one, one to two, if they are identical particles like neutron, proton, or proton, neutron, you can tell, yes, okay, fine. But when there is a three particles, one, two, three, then the interaction go one, two, two, one, two, three, three, two, one, three, three, one, and one, two, three, two, three, one. All these things become very, very complex for the three particles. If you are going to four particles, then it's a four probably four factorial. So many, many terms will come and which cannot solve in the, uh, by analytically in the paper. And then we need a computation. For the computation also, when it becomes like 16 particles, then the calculation go like uh, two days, three days to do the calculation. So it is very hard to solve the equation for heavy nucleus. Then forget about Newton's star. Now then call effective interaction. Effective interaction means we have to take some average field. That means effective field for this. And there is a two kind of cell model. It is also uh, like that, but uh, it is uh, in a different fashion. For example, find a core and outside core. For example, this is a big room. Many people are here. We are telling that only the outside people are disturbing, other people are constant, means constant, like that. This is the cell model. Then going for mean field theory, where we have to take an average field. That means the interaction between only two, each particle, two, three, two, four, two, three, one, two, one, all have the similar interaction. Do not take different. So then this average uh, potential you have to take and solve the sodium directors. There is also many liquid drop model uh, with finite correction. This is also still one of the uh, successful models. So I still now also using, but most importantly, now we are using this kind of interest. That is non-relativistic. When we're solving this equation by the Schrodinger equation, we call non-relativistic model. When we sort of solve this equation in the Dirac field, then we call that relativistic. But relativistic has a little bit different theory. Let's uh, understand what is the theory. The theory comes from the equa. It's a Meijan theory, okay? Then you are now, now question come. Why Meijan come inside? At that time when the, uh, this equa also find the Meijan, at that time pi Meijan, he told it's pi Meijan. So then also all scientists tell that you uh, you are something talking crazy. And also criticize like he is going to suicide. If you read his bibliography, biography, then you can understand how painful life when someone, your work is criticized by whole world. Because when he found, uh, the experiment I can easily tell you, your M, which mass is proportional, inversely proportional to range. When they're going to take the mass of the nuclear and try to calculate, because when, actually they did not do this, they tried to calculate range of the, from the experiment. And they found it is around where the, what is the range will come. From that, the generated mass M is around, means it is like 150 or 57, I forgot, in 150 MeV. This is the mass he found. Then there is no particle exist in that mass. Then he told that this is a new particle which is interact. That means the two proton or two nucleon or two neutron or proton neutron all have same interaction. Interact through a extension of ions. But at that time, no one wanted to believe. He unable to publish this paper also in a good journal. And they published this paper in his own country journal in Japan in a very poor journal, which has no impact factor nothing. But after 20 years, he get Nobel Prize because this particle going to discover in the experiment as well. Once this particle expert discovered this pi meson, then the theory of nuclear also going to change. That comes out to your meson theory. That is relativistic mean field, which you never study in for a uh, BSc. Also, you never study in for a uh, MSc because there is no Odisha universities have this course till now because they should they should re, uh, means. Uh, 
uh, refund their course, but not yet. Okay. Here, Pi Major, this is you now you maybe ask the question you talk about Pi Major, now you are talking about Sigma Omega rho. Actually, these are the region and states of Pi Major. Okay. Here is 2 Pi, here is 3 Pi, all these things are there. So that's details you can go and also you know that what, which is attractive, which is impulsive, and all these things. Then, if you are telling that I am using this very complex, I don't want to discuss also here. Okay. These are only things I can tell you. Here you can see. Sigma, sigma, this tank for sigma measures. And here is the sigma, sigma square. And here is the omega measure. Here is rho measure. Here is the sigma is interacting with rho measures. Here is the omega is interacting with rho measures. Because if I am telling that, okay, uh, in this theory, what is the two nucleons are there, like two bot in a pond. If you, you have a very stable pond, you put two bot. So two bots are there. The interaction median is the water. The same way we tell that here the interaction median is major. Actually, they are not interacting like this. They are interacting through a medium that is major. That major is which is already. So then we take and this theory and try to calculate. And we have also linear terms, nonlinear terms, trying to understand what is the things coming out. So then we have also solve the Euler Lagrangian equation, you know this, and uh, then after that also go to place that equation, KG equation, and all these equations will be confused much. So not go to that. Okay, this is just I want to show you. And from that equation by solving, I get my energy density and pressure density, which I am talking about. This is this is your equation of state. You can see any different model, and there is a experimental data also here. Because we also experimental means it's a not experiment, it's experimental uh, empirically extracted data. So this band. So that's why your equation of state must be passed through this. But what is the density here? Your density is here is also 0 0.5. So it is like two to three times of your saturation density, the sub density of a nucleus. But we need at least five to ten times of the saturation density for a neutron star. That's why many nucleus when you are going to extend some of the equation of state unable to explain what is the mass of the neutron star we get. So that is also uh, many, uh, many, because you can see many papers I have also on this. So here is we trying to um, modify the, the coupling constants between the models and other to find out what is the things we can do. There is some uh, ISC experiment, this is heavy and collision experiment, this is text uh, experiment, the many experimental data. We try our model to put out inside. And we are checking also what is the relative change which is going to change with our different term. This is the beauty of omega rho in interaction because this is a question I'm asking here because this paper I published in 2013. So this, this is like that. So, but nowadays we have already fitted and also have a very good model for that kind of style. So now, things what is the thing that what I discussed there, now my band, which is showing in the behind and here also, you can, you can find this band can be into this here by the constant lambda omega without affecting all other properties of the nucleus as well as to the neutral star. This is the ship. Shift equation of state from here to there, I can bring and without changing any. And this is your uh, Q of equation, which is a very famous equation. Here you can see energy density, pressure density, pressure density, this gravitational constant, mass of the constant. This is the R distance between the star to the, um, to the person, means the source I am here. So that is, this is, if I have the E and P, I can find this mass. This is the mass of the Newton star. Okay. And this is the to a pressure of the neutron star. This is the energy density of the neutron star. And this is pressure density of the neutron. It is a couple uh, equation. So I have to solve simultaneously these two equations in the numerically. Then I can get the mass of the neutron star. So from each equation of state, I can get one, one, um, one, um, one mass and one radius for the neutron star. OK? These are a few things uh, based on your, uh, based on the, uh, based on the theoretical calculation that can explain to your experimental data. So now I have here. Actually, I'm happy with that. The questions come. These are the neutron star data you can see. This is the band uh, in the last, last observed neutron star. So you can see I take many uh, parameters that, modern, that are in my model to check to 
which is going to produce only few one or two of them going to produce but the rest are not so that means there is many things we are missing maybe now let's going to understand what is the composition of a neutron star i get this mass what for few parameter so that's why i am not exactly uh, exactly you know that what is the composition of a neutron star now neutron star with a pure neutron matter core or able to explain the major neutron star in a different way so this is not actually happy not the end of the story now we have to going to hyperon matter why hyperon matter come to play because when your neutron star became this the density became 6 to 9 or that i always tell 4 to 10 times of the saturation density the saturation density is the density of iron okay then that what happened neutron are identical fermion their chemical potential increases rapidly with the function of density when you are increasing the as the chemical form uh, chemical composition of the uh, particles those who are present in the charged particle basically increase then what happen the threshold energy that is the minimum energy required for the eukaryotic interaction going to increase and in that case there may be a formations of strange particle that we called as ba strange baryon that called hyperon so what are the hyperon different hyperons because you, you can try to understand here so hyperon is here cascad lambda sigma delta all these are hyperons so here is also this is this is a very beautiful structure to understand because when you are moving here there is like a neutron and electron here that means nucleon and electron proton neutron and electron here is a proton neutron electron and also here n is called the neutrino which is trap this is also here then when you are coming to here neutron proton electron and muon also there muon is also one of the leptons you know then that is hello there is something okay there is super conducting uh, protons are also there that means they get high due to the high charge dens uh, density then it is expected there is formation of pair pion in this region there is a formation of a kion in this region because your density is slowly slowly increasing towards the center so when your density in increasing there is a possibility the assumption because no one going to the neutron star to observe this or we know the composition of that but we are we have the assumption because how can we explain a star that the story all so then we thinking that also there is a formation of kion as well here and there is also more better theory coming like there is a baryon octet are there that is hyperon so here i take this row instead of following this 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 or this this i have explained already only neutron proton i have taken and told but now i am going to the this part this assumption this is the possibility we have to try in that possibility that means i have to take the hyperons so this one hyperon star or hyper hybrid star because neutron star plus hyperon star together to hybrid star and there is star strange star also quark gluon plasma qgp all these things are there also that uh, that is also there so now i take the hyperons my particle and i have some chemical equation which i have to maintain in my theory as well these are the chemical equation proton neutron electron this is uh, sigma plus there is a neutron sigma 0 c cascade 0 lambda here neutron electron uh, cas cas sigma minus cascade minus all these are the chemical equation you must have to balance which is the conservative law of the charge and also neutrality charge we call as naturalness and charge neutrality which always you know in your uh, physics as well as more use in the chemistry like that so but here different particle only okay but the charge is like that plus minus all these things okay so you can see cascade zero cascade zero electron sigma plus cascade minus sigma minus all these things are to balance so then you can see when you are taking hyperon matter there is a band which is already extracted from the neutron star uh, neutron star observation So, but now when I take the hyperon star, only nucleon I am taking. Then my my graph is inside the band. But when I take the hyperon, then my theory is going to fail. That means my theory is not applicable when I taking my hyperons to account. So now what I have to do? Next I am to going to hyperon matter. Then I found that. Then what I have to do? I have to add the rotation. because in my theory because the neutron star i already told it is rotating 
So now we have to include the rotation. That means which is the first my theory is in Newton's turn, Newton proton, then it is explained. It is go to the curve. But now with zero omega, that is the frequency of the you know, rotation. So uh, when it is zero, then it is showing this curve. So now I have to add the frequency to the omega. How I can add? This is the formation of a different variant uh, object with respect to density. You can see when the density changing, Newton proton is there, then going to sigma, then going to uh, omega. And, uh, this is lambda, then going to sigma, then cascade, all these term. Cascade has two particles, zero minus, and sigma has zero minus, zero and plus, and lambda. And here it is also sigma. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Total is called, that's why it's called baryon octet. Okay. Here it is written. So these are the things I got for the different, different value of the row. So now, here we are now. So when I take the new term, I get this mass, restrict the equation for equation state. When I'm taking the e hyper matter, then my equation of state going to the symmetric energy and other things is very fine. Symmetric energy, you already know in the liquid term model, the same calculation also in there. But the mass is now not there. So when I'm taking the hyper matter, then I do the equation of state, but it's not matching to the missing hyperon physics in the higher density or higher density extended to the RMF model. So now I have the I have the question that how I have to come back. Then I have to go into rotational frequency. Then I come to using the Einstein equation. That one is the spherical coordinate coordinate. We have to go for the space uh, space time uh, function. And here, what you have to do, because it is a little bit complex for you, because you do not know the tensor algebra. Okay, by the way, but in little understand, there is all three coordinates are the space coordinate, one time coordinate, we have to go here. Here you can see also same pressure and energy density have to implement. Okay, everything what I'm calculating, it is function of energy density and pressure density. There is nothing. And you know, it is a constant from the gravitational other things, there is the pressure same. So that's why, Every calculation has not very difficult. Only the equation look difficult, but it's not really that. Okay. So uh, in that case, I put my equation, then I can do the static. That means before I'm calculating this static, uh, Newton star is not rotating. Now I calculating which the Newton star is rotating. So then what happened? Whatever the equation of state I have, now it already crossed to the border, except this one. That means except this one parameter ASU, rest of the parameter going to fill up. So that means we have to take, here my con conclusion come to that, that, we have to take, and here I show also how the mass going to change and how the Newton's static mass, 0.2 for not there, but it's going to change. So now, and this paper is also in 2017, but new, new things I have not shown here. So here the basic come like this, we have to understand the composition of the Newton star. Actually, as the density is going to increase, not exactly Newton star containing the neutron and proton as well. Neutron, proton, and baryon octet, as well as the QGP, which is not yet explained in my model. So it can be implemented this part. Come also in this way I come. You can see there is a little purple color in the middle, which is containing quark gluon plasma. But that also very difficult to include in a nuclear model to explain the neutron star. So till now, whatever the I did, it reached to my um, um, partially reach the destination what I trying to explain. And here some of the curves, how it is changing without, um, without rotation, with rotation, and this is the band, this is the causality where you cannot go, this is the band where you have to present. All these things are uh, but here, whatever the calculation I did, it is in the Kepler frequency, which is one for zero zero hours. But I observe the frequency from the Newton star is equal to 446 hertz. So it is double almost. So then I trying to see the uh, difference, how the velocity in um, how my frequency increasing, and I get the results. So you can see for the without hyperon is with hyperon. So if I taking and around 0 0.8 to 1.2 frequency, they are going to the band. So that means my model is now reasonable good to obtain the Newton star mass and radius as well as to the observational data. So these are the basic things that I discuss about the uh, Newton star and other. So here, whatever the talk I give to you, this is about 
future prospectus is the quark matter properties to be included in the neutron star that is a uh, uh, not included and what we did not discuss is the merger of gravitational radiation nuclear synthesis and quadrupole polarization these are the my recent topics where i am working but it's bit difficult to understand the in for the beginners in the bs level so okay okay thank you and this is the some of my collaborators from the different uh, country is my he is my one of the host and he's also from these are my collaborators from different part of the uh, india and also other countries and thank you and this the future practices you are going to trying to explore body interaction to implement in the nuclear because now i am using this so this is by this okay this kind of process thank you very much now is the time for question and answer you can hear me hello you can hear me yes sir yes sir okay now the time for question and answer if there is anything thank you sir thank you sir for a beautiful presentation Uh, your vast learning and enormous knowledge lighted our students regarding the topic. I hope our students will be benefited from your mind blowing deliverance. Now, uh, the session is open for the question answer. If any students have any doubt, they can put their question to our resource person. So all are all the participants are requested. If they have doubt, any doubt. they can ask our resource person on muting their audio uh, i request our uh, resource person to on uh, his video sir you uh, can on your video so yes, we want to have yes, a, yeah. yes sir thank you sir uh, sir i think there is no cause any question uh, i have just checking the chat box uh, so there is not any question so uh, i am really i am very much thankful sir for your such a beautiful presentation though i am a faculty of uh, department of english i have a little idea very little idea about physics <laughs> in english say i have i know nothing about physics but the way you presented and your slides i have seen so those are faculties from uh, physics faculties or the students from physics they might have understood many things so now i request uh, dr sunil kumar pradhan sir the iqc coordinator of our college to propose a vote of thanks sir uh, so before that i request all the participants just to on their video uh, for which we can take some screenshot for our references 
sir uh, martinya sir uh, sir you on our, your video sir actually we will take uh, uh, photos नायक in the last part uh, formal vote of thanks will be proposed by me honorable principal of the institution professor p rao esteemed resource person professor putunja bhuya head of the department physics dr r k sahu and uh, faculty member of physics professor b c rao other members who have joined this webinar and my dear students so as a formal vote of thanks i must first uh, extend my vote of thanks to professor nutunja bhuya assistant professor and deputy head of center of theoretical and computational physics uh, from university of malay kuala lumpur malaysia i am extremely happy that one of our students of uh, this institution uh, has given a nice talk uh, to the students uh, from a long distance in this pandemic period i hope uh, professor bhuya has delivered a beautiful talk regarding the uh, topic <coughs> neutron star matter from heaven to earth uh, our uh, happiness get multiplied when we came to lo- uh, learn that came to know that professor bhuya is an alumni of this institution uh, and in future i also expect professor bhuya will join us and give some valuable talks to the students uh, of this institution and secondly i must thank the head of the institution professor prabhakar rao who is continuously supporting us to organize such type of intellectual events like your seminar webinars uh, throughout this pandemic period and potamunde college uh, is in a leading place to organize such events with the help of professor prabhakar rao next i must thank uh, Pro- uh, dr r k sahu head of the department and convener of the webinar who has beautifully coordinated to organize the event Uh, in this uh, in, at patamunde college along with professor b c rao uh, reader in physics uh, to organize such webinars and particularly this webinar next i thank the members of uh, uh, iqac dr m k nayak j malik and professor s misra who have uh, coordinated and given their technical support to organize this webinar uh, and at last i must thank the other faculty members and uh, faculty members from other institutions and my dear students who have participated and learned from this webinar thank you all thank you, thank you professor pradhan for a beautiful keynote uh, speaking that uh, you welcome us for the uh, you, department where i did my uh, undergraduate actually Thank not uh, actually i complete my plus 2 and plus 3 both in the patamunde college and it is really honor and also very nice to see all the faculties and uh, now i am uh, thinking that in my time when i am in the patamunde college at oh. the time we did not have such kind of uh, scope to have some seminar uh, okay. even also now covid is one of the things uh, give some negative uh, impact to the society but also give us a new uh, way that we can communicate our knowledge and also scientific uh, discussions through the webinar and other so 
it's also very pleasure that uh, we can have like a, I, I also like to say very much thankful to uh, my beloved teacher, uh, Ramesh sir. And he always uh, connect with me on the discussion and other things. Uh, but uh, I, I would like, because not like a webinar, but uh, it's like a very student discussions on the basic physics and other this is gonna be a very uh, positive hand for the students in the future as well. So I will be, it is also uh, one of the duty that I am belongs to the same alumni. So it's my uh, prime duty that I always trying to cooperate for the college for the academic and scientific uh, uh, advancement and also explore the student in the different field of physics and what are the things is going in the worldwide uh, as well. So it's a, I thanks and also thank you to the principal for uh, uh, giving the permission for such kind of event and also thank you to the organizing committee, all the chair session and host and my beloved teachers, everyone very, very thankful for these things. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We are happy. We are happy and we wish you all much more progress, sir. We are happy, happy for your progress. And I, I who you hope you will do much more ahead. Like okay, it is our time. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, now, uh, a small uh, information to all the participants that the link for the feedback link has been uh, given in the chat box. All the participants can go through the feedback link. After filling the, uh, filling the link, feedback, uh, they'll receive their certificates. So with taking due respect, with taking due permission from our chairperson of this webinar, I declare this webinar is over. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you.